welcome to the stream. All right, let's pull up some oblivion and just do a quick check. Alright, I believe we have game and me for sound. There we are. Anyway guys, good morning and welcome to the breakfast stream. Just sorting this out. Headphones, but why? Good morning, Fox. How are you? Aw, oh, thank you for a subscription. Thank you so much. That's really nice of you. <sighs> Hold on, let's see if I can turn this volume down. I always have it super cranked up if I'm editing and then like playing an actual game. I'm just like, eh. So anyway, good morning. I got my breakfast. I got my tea. This is the last of the current conversation tea because I made a cup and a pot. So uh, all jazzed up. I hope you're doing good today, Fox. <sighs> Let's see here. There we are. Aww. Uh, so, the results are in from the poll, and we are in a dead tie for Prey and uh, <laughs> Good Morning Danish. Good Morning Mega Terra Nova. Um,. Gotta drink your coffee. Aww. Um, so yeah, we've got a two-way split between Prey and um, uh, Fallout New Vegas. So there are three of you right now active in the chat. I will leave it to you guys. What are we starting tomorrow? Prey or Fallout New Vegas? All right, we got one for New Vegas. New Vegas. All right. Uh, I think, uh, I don't, yep. Okay, we're doing Fallout New Vegas. So we won't be doing like quite the deep dive that we did with Skyrim. <laughs> and Mega Terra Nova's like, yeah, no, I gotta be different, gotta be Prey. Tale of Two Wastelands. Okay. Um, I think for at least the purpose of streaming, we're just going to do kind of like the main quest. Um, but yeah, good morning, spider lady. No, it's been so long. Welcome to the stream. I guess we're playing New Vegas, guys. Oh, it's so excites. Oh my goodness. Pray next. Well, no, because we're gonna do Tomb Raider next, but then we can revisit Prey. How about that? All right, I think I still have a ton of loot. Yeah, so we need to drop as much loot as possible and then, yeah, we are on our way. Oh, it's okay. I appreciate you stopping by today. Right now, we're just gonna dump a bunch of loot because today we are sh starting the Shivering Isles DLC and I'm so excited. Um, I really don't think I appreciate appreciated it as much um, before. Yeah! Oh my goodness. So, I don't know if any of you follow me on Instagram or, like, anything like that, but oh my god. Uh, the last couple days, um, have been wrought with drama because Ripley lost her favorite stuffy. Have you seen the and their dog? <laughs> Uh, Shivering Isles is one of the best. Like, there's really no if ands, or buts about that. Oh my goodness. It was like, okay. So, we, um, 
so Ripley was dropped off to us on a Friday. And it became very apparent that she needed like a stuffy or like a soothy toy. Um, and so I got her this this plush that has like a pocket in it that you could put like catnip in it, which I didn't know actually had catnip what in it because it, it wasn't in the description. Uh, Ripley is a kitty cat. Yeah. She uh, is a six month old kitten. And uh, oh my God, where is my house? <laughs> so almost there. So I bought, so it, it had a pocket and then I, she, I gave it to her and she like instantly grabbed it and body slammed it to the floor. And I was like, all right, you do you come to find out there's a little card inside of, um, that came with the fish. And it was like, please enjoy this, like, um, complimentary, like organic catnip and that was like her first experience with catnip oh my goodness she is a lovely terror she's so sweet and so cuddly and so like i will destroy you um those are her modes she's a love muffin or she's a chaos gremlin and there's nothing in between so currently she's snuggled up on my pillow in the living room so but um so yeah, so for the, the six or seven weeks she's been with us, she's had this, this stuffed fish that we creatively call fishy. Um, and other than like, um, when she's like really active, she really didn't have a much of an interest in um, fishy after that first experience. And then, and then I got, got it in my, in my mind, well, maybe we could, um, you know, put one of her, those, uh, crunchy, um, here. I think Spider Lady hasn't, all right, Jumpy hasn't actually seen her. So these are some old pictures, but I have a slideshow <laughs> set up. So this is her, like, the first night we got her. Um, she, yeah, she's about f a little over four pounds here. Uh, she started off a very shy baby and she's still really, <laughs> and she's still very shy around new people. Um, but now that like she's here, um, you know, she, she knew like pretty quickly, oh, this is my house. Okay. And she runs around like it's her house. Um, so she's, she's been with us for about seven weeks now oh she does she has such a little sweet face and she knows she's cute oh don't worry about it i mean she's a cat she's fixed it's not like she's gonna be dating so um but uh yeah <laughs> she doesn't she has she gets lovies that's all she cares about and she gets treats but um but yeah so we put a crinkle ball inside this fish and then suddenly like, oh my God, this was the perfect toy for her. Um, she has a really strong prey instinct. So giving her something that like, uh, kind of focuses her attention is really nice. Yeah, she does allow me to live with her. I feel very privileged. <laughs> um... So yeah, okay. Uh, how's this looking now? 164. I think we can head out now. So a couple days ago, we were playing with her. And it's funny because we have our furniture, like the seating in our uh, living room set up kind of like in a U um, for tabletop. So there's couch, couch, and a love seat in the middle and then coffee table. So I sit against the outer wall and I can see into the dining room and every once in a while you'll just see this fish just like pop up over the back of the um, couch behind Mr. B and um, it's, it's just, it's hilarious. Um, and the other day she and Mr. B have been playing 
And then she went and laid down and took a little cat nap because cat. And, um, am I going the right way? Yeah. And then later she comes to me, um, I would say probably about one, one, two o'clock and she's, and she's like crying and I'm like, Hey, are you okay? Did you fall? Did you whatever? And she starts looking around. She looks like my baby junk rat. Oh my God. That's a good name. Um, oh my God. That's such a good name. Um, so yeah. And I was like, well, I was like, let's get your, let's get your stuffy. Let's get your fishy. Can't find fishy. Cannot find fishy at all. Guys, it's here. Um, and I was like, where is it? So, um, Mr. B works grave graveyard like I used to. So, um, I was like, well, we can't go upstairs cause we're going to wake him up, but let's, let's look down here. And I knew they had been playing with fishy. Like this was not, you know, so tore apart the entire first floor, nothing, not nothing under the bookcases, nothing. I looked everywhere. I even looked in the powder room, even though she never takes the toys in there because that's where her litter is. And um, and then later I tore our bedroom apart. I have no idea where Fishy is. And of course, like she's angry and she's like sad and super despondent. We can't find Fishy. She's the last person to have seen her own favorite plush. So I don't know what happened, but <laughs> I had one overnighted from Amazon. So yesterday it was just like all joyous because Fishy is home. <laughs> All right. No, go away. I'm not here. Uh, hi. Can't talk now. That door has been making noises again. No telling what's coming out. Aw, thanks. I'm, I put like five of them on her Christmas list. I just need to have like Madness. something. Why? Why? Everything is wrong. It can't be done. Stay away from me. I won't go back. You can't make me go back. I will kill you all! You're all going to die! Stay back! This one's violent! Yeah! Um, thank you. Uh, this is my first cat. Mostly because, um, I was so allergic to them as a kid, I never thought I could actually have one. So, but, um, I don't have problems. Stay back from that door if I were you. But I don't have problems with my allergies with her. I have more problems, like, literally going out to get the mail than <laughs> around the cat, so. Tell me about the strange door. I don't know where it came from, and I don't want to. Those who've gone in have come back out wrong. I'm just here to warn folks to stay away. What happened to them? Look for yourself. Their brains are adults. Mm. Got no sense. Perfectly normal people went in there. Aww. And this is what's come out. Ha! It's your funeral. I'm just here to warn people, not keep them out. Go ahead in. I'll be here to clean up the mess when you come out. Oh, that's such a bummer. I'm sorry you can't have your kitty. Unworthy, unworthy, unworthy. Useless mortal meat, walking bag of dung. Weird. A nice effort, though. Shame he's dead. <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> so anyway. Rend the flesh of my foes. I put up a little a little video over on uh, Ripley's Instagram, which is Ripley the Cat 426, because Ripley, um, really? of her being reunited with Fishy. Lovely in the aisles right now. Perfect time for a visit. I can't have a cat either. My apartment is attached to my mom and dad's house. My mom is kind of scared of cats. I've got dogs, though. Oh, cute. At least you have, like, furry companion. Oh, hey. Do let's be civil, shall we? Please, have a seat. <laughs> yes, what can I do for you? I imagine you're here about the door. 
I do like cats. I have and love cats in the past. I just prefer dogs. Uh, is Zuko the name of your kitty cat? Yes. You have entered, and now you are here. Amazing. Truly. Amazing. I always thought it would be fun, like, if to have several fur babies and to name them after, like, all the companions. So, like, Appa, Momo, Pabu, Zubat. Oh, amazing. Uh, who are you? I am Haskell, Chamberlain to the Lord Sheagora. You approach the Shivering Isles. Through the door behind me lies the realm of Sheagora, mm -hmm. Prince of Madness, Lord of the Never There. We have a pretty... Uh, we have a comfortably sized townhouse, but I couldn't imagine having, like, a dog who needs to run around or like a rabbit that really like is on the floor and running around versus like Ripley has like the benefit of height. Um, call him Zabumafu. <laughs> Me sing to the cat. He's, uh, he's a bird. Nice. My dogs are moss after the IT crowd and crews after Terry Crews. Oh, that's so good. Because my lord wills it to be so. It poses no danger to Mundus. No compact has been violated. It is a doorway, an invitation. Perhaps you will accept it for what it is. For you? I do not know. My lord seeks a mortal to act as his champion. For a as long time I had a Terry Crews, um... It is a foolish endeavor. President Camacho, like, um... Own. His reality follows suit. Like a uh, election t shirt? It was fantastic. You were not summoned. What about the people outside? They entered this realm and were ill prepared. I would say Their my favorite two Terry Crews roles are probably Idiocracy and uh, Nine Nine. So. Cured? You speak as if they are diseased. They live now in another state of being. Perhaps it is you who needs a cure. Uh oh. back i have no idea what just happened uh, my husband named cruz he was m meant to be mr spider's dog but he's a mama's boy and very special baby he was very tiny oh just uh all right Oh, you gotta... Alright. We shall see. You do as you will. Moss is our big boy. He's derpy and lovable. Oh, nice. Oh, it's nice when you have a mix like that. Or, you may continue onward. Through the door behind me. If you can pass the gates of madness, perhaps the Lord Sheogorath will find a use for you. All right, what happens if I go through the door? Who is to say? There are always choices to be made. The realm of madness is no different in that regard. Your choices are your own. Enter or do not, but make your decision. I've other duties to which I must attend. Speak with me again when you have made up your mind. The anticipation is almost too much to bear. 
All right. Oh, okay. All right. Oh my goodness. It always like makes my heart skip a, a couple beats. So I'm like, oh, there, there goes, there goes the stream. Uh, Pelagius. Okay. We, we did that quest before. All right. Well, have you yeah. Let's go through the door. I'm sure my Lord will be most pleased. Assuming you ever managed to see him. You'll want to pass through the gates of madness. Oh, and mind the gatekeeper. He dislikes strangers to the realm. Enjoy your stay. Would like to get up, please. Why won't you let me up? Uh-oh. I'm, like, stuck in the chair. There we go. I think it just took a little bit longer. I've entered the Shivering Isles. In order to find the lord of the, this realm, I must first pass through the gates of madness. Alright. I think it just took longer for that, uh... Yeah. Uh, yeah, the stream kind of did a thing. Um, yeah. Is my sound and stuff still okay? Is my sound and stuff still okay? Okay. I hear birds. I hear me. I think we're okay. <sighs> what can I say? Computer things. Uh, it's frustrating because I actually have like a very, very long... Uh-oh. I do have a very long, um, like, network cable that runs through the house under the carpets because, uh, trying to stream on wireless is kind of the worst. Probably should just sneak in. It's a bollywog. Yeah, it would be nice if there were more side quests. Um, I do like, um, I don't know if that makes sen sense, but like, cause you can do stuff in the city The like, um, you can do stuff in the cities and then city. And then there are the caves and the caves have some good stuff in them. Um, I think only one though is associated with a side quest. But I don't think I really appreciated the game as much the last time I played. Like, I didn't really have, like, the bigger... I don't know. I didn't know about the... As much about the lore and stuff. So now I feel like this time coming through, it's much more interesting. And I can do it with you guys and, you know, slow it down. Got all sorts of new, interesting, like, alchemical things. Definitely has a, a sort of Lovecraftian vibe, though, that's for sure. Am I going the right way? I don't know. 
I'm going A way. <laughs> Yeah, I think we have to go to, like, that fortification up there, but I could be wrong. I found the gardens of flesh and bone. Seeing how far I can pull this empty map here. Oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, alright, that makes alright. That makes a little more sense. Here we are. I have to say, like, I'm gonna miss playing Alien Isolation with you guys. I get Alice in Wonderland vibes from the Shivering Isles. Perhaps Lovecraftian is a better fit, but I've never really read Lovecraft guess too much of a kid no i think i think there is something to that um especially when you consider that you kind of have to split the difference between the two halves of the island you know you have the the mania and the, and then you have um it's not despair what's the other one but you know what i'm saying like there's Definitely Alice in Wonderland. Apocrypha and Skyrim was, was super Lovecraft. Oh, absolutely. And Hermaeus Mora is my favorite. Uh, Dementia, that's they should it. Have listened to me. Sheldon! Welcome to my town. Uh, tell me about the gatekeeper. He guards the gates of madness. See for yourself. He's about to destroy a party of adventurers. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They say the keys are sewn up in the gatekeeper's body. Basically, that means you're not getting in. Passable? The place was pretty deserted when I got here. Of course, once I was here, others followed. Can't say I blame them. Rumors? Watch for the Elytra stingers. Their poison can be deadly. They don't like magic much, though. Good to know. Thanks, See. Sheldon. I'm Fella Sarandis. Don't breathe on me. Uh, can you tell me about the gatekeeper? He's pretty scary, isn't he? Let's watch him in action. Aw, heck yeah, everybody's welcome on my channels. Like, it's a place to drink tea or coffee, uh, or whatever you fancy. Hang out, play some video games. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, I should be having a Lego stream coming up very soon. Um, I will post as soon as I know. So uh, stay tuned. That should pop up on Twitter. I'll give you guys a heads up as soon as I know. But we should be doing Legos, I think, next Friday. So a Lego stream? Yes, I have a big kit this time. I actually bought two kits because there was a sale that you could get like $10 off if you spent 50 bucks or more. And it was just pretty easy to do when you're buying Legos. So yeah. So I'm really excited. It, believe it or not, I didn't buy any Star Wars kits this time. <laughs> Aw, thanks Mega Terra Nova. Yeah, it's just video games and crafts and Legos and tea, you know? Yeah. And breakfast. Uh, by the way, uh, it, kind of the usual. I have my, like, oh, baby. Hi, baby. Oh, no, guys. Yeah, she's a little peanut. Uh, here, let me do one up. Do one up, maybe. Do you want to show everybody how pretty you are? No? Okay. She goes. I know, I know. I'm gonna bring my knitting over after I finish my coffee. Heck yeah, sounds good. Uh, Ripley is a very active kitty. Um, we play about uh, i would say we play for about four hours total every day and considering she's a cat that's a lot and most of the time it's fetch 
so she really likes fetch. One leads to the lands of Mania, and one to Dementia. The gatekeeper makes sure no one gets in who isn't supposed to. Yeah. If you guys are interested, I'm pretty good at um, detailing her antics, but... So... So this is her for... Actually, I think it should be Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. So it's a nice enough place, less dirty than others. I feel like I belong. That old man in the room made out of butterflies, he said to wait here. Rumors? In crucibles, a man named Hiris Clotus has been trying to convince people to kill him. Have a great stream, Fox. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the bits. We'll see you soon. Hopefully we'll see you for uh, Fallout tomorrow. See you later. I'm fine. <laughs> Team Mania? Yeah, I feel that vibe. Dementia's kind of meh. But, you know. Ooh. Well, we, we're just gonna... Ooh, nope. The formidable gatekeeper has destroyed a party of adventurers. I should talk to the residents of Passwell before trying to deal with the creature. I like both a lot. Dementia has a fun, dark quirkiness. <laughs> yeah, I just, um, I, I think I do like the, the Alice in Wonderland aesthetic of Mania. Okay, we're gonna have problems now, but... Oh, why is he so big and fast? Okay. That's a problem. Alright. I do appreciate uh, Skyrim gives you the blips so you know where your enemies are. I have a hard time differentiating between the sound of my armor kind of like clinking together and uh, Ripley's collar. Oh, we're just gonna hit him with everything we got. Oh, did he just pick me up? Guys, he straight up just picked me up. Like, I know we just had, you know, toss a short person day, but that's not okay. You need to have consent for that shit. Okay. Um, yes. Meet my gold brand. The gatekeeper is dead. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had okay. I can go through either door. So, you've managed to kill the gate. Hell yeah, I did. Pity. Well, you'll now be able to enter the realm proper. You'll notice there are two doors. One leads to the lands of Mania, the other to Dementia. Enter through either one. The lands are quite distinct, but both are Sheyagorath's domain. You'll want to seek out Lord Sheyagorath. I believe he has plans for you. Try not to disappoint him. Uh, tell me about dementia. The lands of dementia reflect the darker side of its residence. It is easy to get lost among the tangle of roots growing out of the ground. If you wish to meet dementia's citizens, seek them out in Deepwallow or Felmore. I'm sure they'll welcome one such as you with open arms. The doorways into the realm proper. You may enter through either one. 
Really, it depends on which aspect of the realm more suits your disposition. As I've said, all choices have consequences. Spill the tea. <laughs> oh no, we don't spill tea here. We sip it. Uh, welcome to the, the uh, welcome to the stream, change, Magenta. We are just starting the Shib Shivering Isles DLC. So uh, we finished the main quest. We finished um, the Mages College. So yeah. Well, I know that's the point, though. Everyone spills tea, but here. It's a happy place. <laughs> oh, and tossing sort short people, apparently. There's not a whole lot of gossip, although my cat, I think, is being very chatty. You took the toy. If you want me to throw it, you have to bring it back. <laughs> oh my goodness. What do you want? You've had treats, you've had food, you have water, you have fishy. You can come in. Oh my goodness. Come on in. Oh my goodness. So yes, yeah, spilling the tea is not my cup of tea. Secrets are generally more powerful when you keep them. The lands of Mania are bright, vibrant, and full of color. You'll find its inhabitants reflect the land itself. If you wish to meet the residents of Mania, you'll find them in the settlements of Hale and High Cross. Take care, though. Though the citizens and creatures of Mania are colorful, they can often be quite deadly. I'm sure you can handle it, though. Come on in. What are you doing? You come in here all the time. Pardon the giant door outside my door. We're having a screen door put in. Come on. What are you doing? Why are you being weird? Come on. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, tell me about New Shea. It is, of course, the capital of the Shivering Isles. It is divided into... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's one of the sins, is spilling coffee. He is the Prince of Madness, the ruler of the Shivering Isles. It is by his will that we exist in this I place. I only brought one toy with me, He sweetie. is our lord and master. Oh my goodness. You'll want to speak with him soon, as I believe he has plans for you. You will find him in New Sheoth, in his palace. It is best not to... Ever since it turned cold, um, she's been extra... I don't know. Needy? Snuggly? What'd you just do? What are you doing? What do you see? Do we have spiders? Oh my goodness, she's being a nut. I might have to go set up her puzzle box for her. But yeah, she's been extra snuggly and extra needy, which is fine, but like... I'm not used to her being so... I don't know, discontent. Alrighty guys, what's it gonna be? Mania? Or dementia? Spilling the goods, yeah. Are you just gonna loaf? Okay. She's 100% loaf. She's got her little... Uh, yeah. Uh, he followed me into town, and I, uh... You wanna see dementia? Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, he followed me into town. I kind of ran through the creek so I could, uh, re-up on my health, and, um, I sick gold brand on him, so, um, good times. <laughs> good times. Magic weapons are super OP in this game, and then, like, mundane weapons are, <laughs> excuse me, you might as well only have, like, rusty calpers. Okay. All right.
It was really fun that we got to um, see that like modded section in Skyrim that was like this. Hi. Oh, okay. Bye. Wow, he's fast. I will take that all back. Okay, let's see if we can actually talk to this fellow. I'm J Red Ice Veins. Ice Veins. You ever wonder why things look better without their skin on? No, instance, I don't wonder that. You only really see the bones when you take them out. You can hear them better that way too. I forgot how ridiculous the exchanges were. The gatekeeper's dead. He won't stop us from coming and going now. Goodbye. Guys, that was a little dark, even for me. Um, he's right about the bones. Uh, yeah, they're easier to see on the outside, but I'm pretty sure they're on the inside. Oh, that makes me think of that awful meme where it's like, just remember, your bones are always wet. <laughs> Alright. I will try to stay on the road. I know I'm really bad at that, just so we can kind of see what there is to see. We got some, some green moats. I think there's a couple shrines and stuff where we like meet folks. Let's see what else we have. We can take our rare stuff uh, to that lady. Honestly, like the color quality does remind me of the Pacific Northwest quite a bit. <laughs> but give me a, a rainy, dreary day and I'm a happy girl. Oh yeah, here we go. Should probably put this away. Long tooth camp. Let's see who we can meet. Oh, not friend. Okay. Well, all right, we got this. Yeah. Ooh, we got a book. Bark and Sap. The editors wish to express that the views contained herein are solely to the author and have been printed posthumously and anonymously. Ooh. Oh, that is a big, long book. We're just going to take it and say we read it. <clears throat> And more heretical thoughts. I love it. All right. We have found a camp. I'm not really sure why he went down quite like a bag of bones. But I did take some points and one-handed the last time I leveled up. So I don't know one-handed <clears throat> one hand weapons <laughs> these do kind of remind me um of day drops okay by the way the uh bow of voltage and we have found two of them so far uh scallion scalon um, literally best bow I found <clears throat> in the game so far. Because it does soul trap, and it does, like, a stupid amount of lightning damage. Which, of course, stacks when we're sneaking. This is cool. I like, uh, arbors and things. off-road or is it just I 
Kinda. But I wanna go this way. <laughs> stay on the road. No. I'm gonna stay on the road. No, I'm not. I'm never gonna stay on the road. I was hoping we'd find like a cave. The caves are really fun. I can see what they were talking about though, about the paths being really windy. I don't think I did a big explore like this last time. I just was like, oh yeah, let's do the things and... Okay, that's new. Oh yeah, we're maxed out on bow, so we have that like cool knockdown or knockback effect. Yes, I don't think so. Oh, he silenced me, that's rude. Gnarl bark. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now we can heal a little bit. Walk in. Oh. Gotta go. Definitely have a fish people vibe. Definitely strong fish people vibe. Oh, what the heck is hitting me? Oh no, it's another one of these things. They remind me of the old movie poster from the Black Lagoon. Yes! Um, just wasting arrows now. <laughs> Just bobbing along here. Yeah. Wonder if I can get any of my arrows back. Ah, uh, three of them. Yeah, no, I, the big mouth and stuff. Where did this guy get off? Okay, so he is dead. He's just kind of... <clears throat> Grummit. Grummite. Eggs. <clears throat> oh, there's another one. At least we snuck up on him. <clears throat> oh, it's a prison. <clears throat> you know, we haven't done in a while. Save. Probably be good. Oh, no, I'm all out of egg.
Interesting. This is probably a thing for later, but I'm just like, eh. Alright, can we get a local map? Yeah. Oh. Maybe not that room? <laughs> That was a that was that was a lot of stuff happening right there. So those guys get like a like a little second life thing. Interesting. Interesting. I don't really know what we're doing in here. I don't know what I'm doing in here, but I mean, it was on the map. There must be something above us. Yeah, look. Okay. Does that mean we can go... Oh, okay. I think that button fixed both problems. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Jumping is fun. <laughs> good good club game. Um... With how many friends? Sorry, I got a little wrapped up there. One friend? Um, any of the little big planet games are absolutely adorable. I know there's a new one that came out, but there's uh, quite a few of them that are really good. Um, that's definitely super fun. Um, my uh, Mr. B and I play uh, some Phasmophobia together. Uh, Diablo uh, is a fun co-op. Um, if you want to go old school, uh, Magicka is really fun. I don't know if that's... Yeah. Yeah, magic is a blast. It's so, like, cute and silly, but also, like, challenging. I forget what it's called. I know there's a kind of a um, like an escape room game that came out a while back. I saw, I want to say it was like 
John Wolfe and Gab Smolders play. Um, and it was, um, you know, kind of the same principle as like, um, yeah, it's like an escape room game, but it's like kind of cute and, um, like you play in, um, you like solve puzzles in like Egyptian tombs and stuff and it has like a really cute sort of aesthetic. Um... Okay, this, uh, this cave is definitely whispering at me here. I think those are like the, the big ones I can think of off the top of my head. Um... Miss something back here, I think. God, they're like really hurting me. Um, let's see. I think there's a, I shouldn't say fairly new, but um, there was a PC port for a gauntlet. That was kind of fun. Okay, I think that's most of it now. Oh, uh, Boulder's Gate. That's another great co-op game. Um, I played Diablo 2 with Mr. B. That was a good time. I'm super excited because there's supposed to be a new Diablo and a new Dragon Age coming out. And like, I have a soft spot for both of them. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, if Diablo 2 is the one that has the comet, then yeah. Yeah, um, I saw something a while back. It was like a, like a, headline and I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a new Dragon Age. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, Bioware confirms the title for um, on track for release in 2023 Dragon Age 4. Uh, Dreadwolf. How to get there. Okay. 
All right, let's go do something stupid. Uh, you know, I didn't, I, I really had, um, yep, yep, 2023, I'm very excited, there's so much good stuff that's supposed to be coming out next year, opened all this, but I guess I hadn't. I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't have that spell. Yeah, I, I hadn't, um, I have been playing games much more casually and then, um, started getting back into them. And so I, in that time I had played, uh, Dragon Age and, um, and Diablo 2. So they both kind of have like a, a big... I'm not sure about all that, but we do have a, um, some more adventures to get into, so. I have a feeling, if I remember this correctly, that there is a battle that takes place here later. I'm not into Diablo, but I can see me enjoying Dragon Age. Oh, Dragon Age is so good. Um, yeah, if you're not really into, like, that kind of isometric combat, you know, I get that. I know it's not as fulfilling, but, uh, Dragon Age, so good. It would look so cool at night. I don't know, there for a while, and it was probably because of the pandemic, but, like, there was just, like, such a slump for games, and, um, and now I feel like we're coming back around to, like, really good stuff. Um, I know for, like, indie games, uh, on the 22nd of this month, I believe that, uh, Tabby Cat, um, is releasing the fourth chapter of Scarlet Hollow. Um, I believe the beginning of the year, Blackhaven, which is like um, like a historical fiction walking sim um, that I played for my channel, my YouTube channel. Um, I believe that that its sequel is coming out, and I know that. Um, the folks that did, uh, Dagon and then Dagon Little Glass Bottle, um, I believe they're planning on at least one new chapter next year. So, that's pretty exciting. Of course, Arc 2 is supposed to come out, um, yeah. <laughs> it's not really an indie game, but it's not, like, you know... I don't think it gets as heavy of traffic as some other games. Let's see. Oh, um, the, uh, I think the, um, it's not really a sequel, but, um, Concerned Ape, I believe that the Chocolate Factory game is, um, supposed to come out next year, too. So, 
I'm kind of clear on the other side of the map, but we're just going to keep rolling. Yep. Concerned they did do Stardew Valley. Yeah. And then the Chocolate Factory uh, one is coming out. Um, and then... Um, Uh, the full game for Potion um, Practice did come out, but I'm probably not going to play it until the spring. I did the demo and it was really fun, but um, it just, I don't know, it ha because it has like that like fun, like happy vibe, I just kind of want to wait until the spring to play it. Um, let's see. I think Potion Sim had some expand like some expanded content there's just so much right now camp tall trees Oh, I see a cave. <laughs> yeah, it must be happy in the winter. Um, I know some people like get like like seasonal affect disorder in the winter, and I can understand that. I get it in the summer, like straight up, like fall and winter are like my happy times <laughs> but no it, it would be nice to like <clears throat> play that in the spring i think it would be like really match like with most dragons all right we're gonna save and i think i saw a cave Yeah, I, I burn so easily that even, and don't get me wrong, I mean, I like camping, I like hiking, but like, it's really hard for me to do summer. Um, I burn so easily that even with sunblock, it's still like a countdown to sunburn time, so... Mm-hmm. Yep. I have, like, the section of my closet that's just sun shirts. <laughs> um, I have, a, like, a bungee on my, like, day bag, and I always have a sun hat in there. Um, where's the entrance? It's gotta be right here, right? Oh, there it is. We have a pool, but I can't get in until the sun goes down. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's rough. it is it's just you know I'm fair and then I also have really paper thin skin so it's just like you yeah, know that's okay cuz fall is beautiful and spring is pretty nice I'm so glad my daughter had got my husband's skin she never had a sunburn oh good for her
kind of a cool cave. Um, it makes me feel like, um, I haven't played it myself, but obviously I've seen gameplay of it, like, grounded. Um, when you're, like, moving between the stuff in the garden. That's a game that I very much would like to play. Uh, grounded I, and at some point I would like to get brave enough to try the long dark I don't think I have the skills to really play it but I think it would be fun anyway This is cool. This is like their like alchemy lab because that's kind of what it looks like. Oh, ah. I got sleepied! Stupid plants. I wasn't paying attention. Alright. Yeah, really, really cool cave design. I rarely burn. I swim in plant veggies and herbs for the summer, but autumn is my favorite. Yeah, I, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like there's a reason that autumn is m most people's favorite season. Like the harvest and everything's cozy and it's like, um, like you said, when you're planting stuff. So it's like, you know, a year's worth of labor is now like, I don't know, is fulfilled. It's nice. And the cute sweaters, like. Any, any excuse to wear a sweater. <laughs> I think we're back on the road now. It was only a little detour. I just wanted to be nosy. I like to get out my knitting when it gets chilly. I'm sick of knitting every spring and eager for it every fall. <laughs> Uh, do you make something specifically or um, do you try different things? I have a couple knitted items that I was very uh, generously gifted by a few friends of mine who, um, who knit. Soft flannel is my favorite, yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's soon time for us to put our flannel sheets on. I mean, we're in the Central Valley, so it is still, like, comfortably warm during the day, like, in the 60s. Um, but we do get really cold nights. I make whatever suits my fancy. I've mostly made scarves and hats, but I'm working on a blanket. It's all dusty from sitting untouched all year. Ah, it'll shake out. Blanket's really ambitious. I have a friend who quilts, um, and, uh, I'm just like, oh, art meets geometry, you know? <laughs> Thank you. 
I really, really, I've, I've been sitting on supplies to do it for a while. Um, I really want to try felting. And then I saw that um, Rachel Maxey did a video because uh, I guess one of her friends like really does felting. And I'm like, I don't know. It just builds my confidence when I see someone else try something for the first time. I'm like, no, maybe I can do it too. Yeah, it's it's really beautiful. Um Yeah. Well, and I'm from I'm from Amish country, so like um I have a I don't know, quilting just makes me like homesick in a good way, you know, like We're, we're getting there. Look at us go. It's kind of nice to be able to have gone around, though, and see everything. My aunt makes beautiful... Excuse me. My aunt makes beautiful quilts. She gave me one. She did a lot of hand stitching on. It's a work of art. Made me cry when she gave it to me. Oh, see, that's like, that's the quilt you hang up. That's the quilt that you give to your kids, like... Uh. Okay, can I do this without hitting the saints? Yes. Yeah, it's funny because, like, um, I, I know it's like a... I hung it up. I never put it on the bed because I don't want the dogs to mess it up. Yeah, that's, yeah. I have a, a baby blanket that had, um, like, uh, um, the nursery rhyme on it, the tick-tock, the mouse ran up the clock, um, one, and my grandma did the embroidery on it. Um, those were our mousy blankets. Um, there was a little pocket for a mousy that had a little crocheted mousy. But it's so funny because, like, I can't say that there aren't, like, crafts out here in the same way. They're just different. I think there's, like, there's just other things that people make here, but... I'm just so used to people having, like, just an Amish quilt, like, hanging up in their house. Like, that's just what you do. Also, I think, like, part of that just comes out of, like, you know, the homes on the East Coast are so much older and they're not insulated the same way. So having, like, a decorative, like, decorative blankets on your walls also provides a certain function, too. <clears throat> uh, I have um I have like a sampler a sampler sample I have a cross stitch that I did hanging in our living room that I made for Mr. B for our fifth anniversary. Um, I saw somebody had made a beautiful cross stitch on um, Etsy and um, I had emailed the person and asked if she would sell me the pattern because I couldn't find like any like commercially available patterns that had like a good looking Xbox and um, um, uh, PlayStation controllers. Um, home is where 
our respawn point is, is what it says. And it has an Xbox and PlayStation controller on it. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll try to get a picture for it and put it up on, on my Instagram. But, yeah. <clears throat> so... But yeah, I had, I had reached out to this person and I was like, oh, you know, I would, I would pay for, you know, the, um, the pattern for your game controllers. And they're like, no, but it, like, I really wanted it. So <clears throat> I blew up the picture of her item and I took some graph paper and tried to copy the pattern the best I could. And I'm like, oh my god, this is like my grandma stealing, like, patterns out of a magazine. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's not like something I was going to sell or anything like that, but I wanted to be able to make something, and she's like, no. I'm like, okay. It took me a while. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't even have like a fancy background, and um, it it took me um, forty hours, I think. I mean, since I don't do cross stitch every day, like it takes me longer, you know, for all the counting and stuff. So there are so many stone houses with no insulation in that area. Same idea. Yeah. Uh-oh. Let me just see if I can... Can I see me? Okay. All right. I can, I guess I can see me. Oh my goodness. Uh, it makes you feel a little bit better that, you know, okay, good. <sighs> I was going to say like, I didn't see the Wi-Fi drop off my phone or anything today. Twitch just might be having a bad day. But, um, depending on, you know, um, to the east of us so we're in the central valley so the sierras are just going to get pummeled with uh, snow this weekend so that's probably not helping anybody's connection issues i guess i shall steal your rice i don't know i haven't done much alchemy what am i stuck on they're not rusty calipers i don't want them The whole ad thing is wacky. Like, I have pre-roll ads turned off, and some of you guys still get them. I don't know why. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the stream. We are um, kind of just uh, rambling about uh, on the Shivering Isles, making our way to the first, like, location for the actual quest. But, um, yeah, I thought we'd wander around and just explore a little bit. Mm. And the tea of the day is the plum deluxe current conversation oolong tea so it's oolong tea with vanilla rose hips and um currants i somehow managed so i bought i think that's from the fall bundle i bought last year i did a big tea haul and then this year i was like i'm gonna pick up some tea and i bought three tins of harney and sons and somehow I ended up buying yet another current tea. So, I mean, I guess there's no such thing as too much current tea, but like, yeah. All right, I got off the road, now I'm confused. <laughs> well, uh, 
uh, Ripley's made it to almost 7.30, and she's still kind of chill and hasn't tried to burn my office down. I also realized I didn't turn on my cute sign today, but um, it's cool. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my right earbud today, but here we are. It might just be my sweater, like, pushing it up. Okay, here we go. Here's the road. So, and then, uh, yeah, I had the first uh, folks to the chat uh, split the tiebreaker um, from the poll. So we are going to be starting the main quest of uh, Fallout New Vegas tomorrow. I discovered that when I was sick recently that I like English hot tea with cream and sugar. It is cozy. Um, it's it's not my vibe. Um, I grew up with an English great-grandmother. I lived with my grandmas when I was real little. Um, and, uh, man, like, definitely a, a very sweet milky tea. But it does have, like, a certain charm to it, especially, like... If you're having it with like biscuits or cookies, that kind of thing. Ah, oh. might as well not bother sneaking at this point. Oh, I didn't realize he had reach like that. Well, shoot. Hey, guy, have you ever heard of Gold Brand? <laughs> Um, the one thing I do like, like a milkier tea is I make in the summertime, I make a matcha frappe and that has, um, unsweetened coconut milk in it. And then I make homemade whipped cream to go on top. So let me go ahead and save. I don't know what it is about milky tea that doesn't do it for me, but, um, I don't know. I drink my tea black. I drink my coffee black. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Except for, like, those cold, like, beverages, then those I do enjoy creamier for some reason. Uh, is there a particular like brand of tea or style of tea or just like English like black tea yeah yeah um black tea with peach or black tea with orange is so good okay for, so, for a second I was like do I have hair no that's just my hood All this time playing Oblivion, guys, I'm still playing- I'm still wearing the Morig Tong armor because it's still the best combo. I peppermint tea when I was sick. I never loved tea before. Yeah. Yeah. I know some people who just don't like tea at all. And, um, yeah. Um, I know someone who does neither tea nor coffee, but does do hot chocolate, so. There's a hot beverage for everyone. Peppermint tea is my go-to for an upset stomach. Although I hear that um, licorice root or anise root is good for an upset stomach. So, I mean, I like licorice a lot, but I don't know if I if I had an upset stomach, if that's really the smell I want in my nose. <laughs> Alright, so we're starting to see, like, the mania bits now. Got an, what is that? El Elytra? Elytra? Whew! That got, uh, that got a little, a little close. Hey, 
Hey, look guys, we kind of made it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So then, yeah. Those are cool plants. All right, before we start tangling with saints and seducers here. Hello. Speak quickly. Uh, new Shayok, please. New is the capital of the Shivering Isles. We Oriole guard Bliss, the manic district of the city. Tell me about Shayogorath. Shayogorath rules the Shivering Isles. We, the Oriole, are his favored soldiers, the most perfect expression of his might. Uh, tell me about the Shivering Isles. The domain of the Prince of Madness, Sheogorath. We Oriole are tasked with defending this realm against the lesser beings that would destroy it. I like their, uh, like, serpentine eyes. Alright. So into bliss we go. Got some... Did you see my last performance? Did you like it? Have you caught my act yet? I'm Fadal the Juggler. I'm sure you've heard of me. Oh. Okay, so I looked up how to pronounce Elytra because I enjoy Minecraft. Minecrafters pronounce it Elytra, but it's a real word. The outer kind of shell wings cover in the beetles. It's supposed to be pronounced Elytra. Yeah, um, I thought that too. Um, I think the words are really similar. I really struggled with that when I did the little Saints and Seducers, um, like, mod. Um, yeah, Elytra. Oh, man. I think we're going to agree that I'm going to say it wrong in many different ways during this playthrough. But I appreciate you looking that up. I need to leave shortly to go to craft show. We'll stay connected with my phone. It's in the middle of farmland. Good to see you all again. Oh, thanks for stopping by, Mega Terra Nova. Yeah, there's a craft show in our neighborhood uh, today, too. But it's that time of year. Alright. <laughs> the correct way. It feels weird and unnatural. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, tell me rumors. Every resident of Split has a double living in the town. Oh. That's... Okay. I forgot about that, actually. Hey. I used to think you were a hero. A holy knight and all that. I guess I should have known better. Um, you have sweet hair. Tell me rumors. The Ballywog is a dangerous little creature. Some say they grow up to be scalens. Scalens. I want to call yes. them scallions. Yes. Like onions. Goodbye. Oh, Speak this is a nervous me. guy. Hello. Don't mind me. I'm a little tired. Can't sleep at home, you know. The walls, they aren't safe. <laughs> the walls aren't don't safe. You, know? you don't, do you? Well, it's lucky you met me. Here, you've been walking around as if nothing could happen. Why don't you sleep outside? Oh, there's an idea. Why didn't I think of that? But where would I sleep? I need some place to sleep. I've seen some people sleeping out on the street, but they huddle too close to the walls. I need some place safe. I can't just sleep anywhere. There are walls and statues and all sorts of things that can fall on me. Can't have that. Nope. But if you find me a good place to sleep, a safe place outside, I'll reward you. <laughs> Can you tell me some rumors? Duma Grabonk at the Missing Pauldron is collecting that amber you find in the root tunnels. Oh, got some of that. So tell me more about sleeping outside. Oh, don't tease me. It's serious. I could die. We all could die. Please, help find a safe spot outside to sleep where the walls won't come crashing down. Okay. <laughs> Take care.
I hear whispering. The with your petty conversation. Hi. You hungry? Got food? Sweet cakes? Sausages? I would like sweet cakes and sausages. Uh, oh, do you have rumors? I've heard that skinned hounds don't like fire. Ew. Can uh, you do you have any sleeping outside suggestions? Yes, I have idea for you. But first, sweet roll for Fimian. Sweet roll for Fimian. Idea for you. Sweet roll for <clears throat> I don't have a sweet roll. No sweet roll for Fimian. No answer to <clears throat> problem. Hmm. Okay. Fimian gone. Can we steal I a sweet roll from somewhere or buy a sweet roll? I probably should have thought buy before steal, but it is the Elder Scrolls. Common treasures here. Here's an inn. Hello. I feel like Okay, well there's also bread here, so like maybe Uh I have cheese, no sweet rolls. Yes. If you haven't, uh, not today. What do you need? Uh, rumors. Every resident of Split has a double. That's not a new one. Tower. You gotta give me something new, bro. Pleasant dreams. I've got my eye on you. Stay for a while and stay away from my wife. Uh, tell me rumors. The best armor in the city is at the missing pauldron. Can I buy stuff I from you? Food and drink for sale. I'm sure something mm, okay. <laughs> Smoked Bollywog leg. Bye. It's probably fine. Um, I've had like... I've had frog legs. I've had um, alligator tail. So I'm guessing smoked Bollywog probably isn't that weird. Um, common treasures? I know that there's like a fetch quest associated with this place. Hi, I just want to like break into your house. Do you think I need to leave the Shivering Isles to get a sweet roll? Probably. Light blue regalia and orange loafers. Hmm. It might be fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Um, I gotta go. We'll talk later. Hmm. Well, let's save. Um... Yeah. I know for a fact that Oh wait. Did I was I just turned around the wrong way? Yes. Okay. I'm pretty sure my house in Anvil has sweet rolls. Besides, we actually need to go to Dumbarrow Cove and um, send out the pirates. I mean, just because I'm going to a plane of madness doesn't mean that I don't have the daily business to attend to as well. St. Pirates have sweet rolls. Good news, everybody! The diner gathering, holy relics. I've heard others say, you know, I saw your fight against the great prince. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Why don't you go out and plunder? Of course. Am 
my friend one here, actually. Um, got a pear. I feel like that's pretty healthy eating for pirates. There we go. Uh, a pleasure to see you. Hi, do you have sweet rolls down here? No? But, like, I'm your captain, and I want a sweet roll. Let's go to the captain quarters. There might be sweet rolls there. Eh, I should have gone the other way. Eat that pear, no scurvy for you. No, definitely not. Yeah! That's what being a captain's all about. Um, yeah, wait, well, we're... A pleasure to see you. A pleasure to see you, too. I'm always lost in here. There we go. Now, there should be... Delicious. Okay. I think they respawn, but I'm pretty sure that I saw a sweet roll in here at some point. Um, there's an apple. Again, no scurvy for me. Uh, just stolen booze. I wouldn't know anything about that. Oh yeah, we got we got some strawberries, we got an orange. Man, we're just chock full of the vitamin C here. Um, I've got no sweet rolls. Um, excuse me, uh, as a lady of this haunted manor, where are my sweet rolls? Uh, there's a bakery and there's like an actual bakery in Skingrad. Yeah. Let's go to a bakery. I don't know if I've really been in there more than once. <sighs> Tea is so good. It's you. Hi. What a butt. What a butt. Um, let's look at a local map. Um, Fighters Club. Colobian Trader. Hammer and Tongue. Hammer and Tongue. Okay, it must be on the other side. It's such a weird town. Gosh, I actually haven't played now that now that you've brought up Minecraft, I haven't actually played Minecraft in a long time. Okay. Should we wait till morning or steal? Let's see if we can get away with it. Ooh, what's that? A sweet cake. I've been trying modded, not very good at it. Um, which mod are you playing? Okay. Um, I really like, um, 
I enjoy the Hermits and um, the um, and uh, Empires, not mods, but um, like the series. I can get a sweet roll at the craft show. They'll have baked goods. Yeah, just like push it right through the chat. It'll be great. Here. Um, all right. Um, whoa. It's not where we were. Um. So, what is different about Stone Block Three compared to the vanilla game? I used to watch a lot of Hermitcraft. I was a patron for uh, Zadaf and played on the server for a couple years. Good times, yeah. They're just like so talented, like. Oh no, I was right. Billion more blocks and gadgets and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I I don't know if I love um Hi. Here Your you go. lips to his ears. Creepy. Yes? I have I Here, take the sweet roll. Sweet roll for Finian. I don't know if I love all the new specialized like workstations uh, in uh, in Minecraft. Like I don't know like is the fletching table really necessary? Your friends sleep there when Ungor goes, but Vimian no think Ungor really leave. You make Ungor go away faster. He won't leave without his lucky grapes. Can't eat them. I try. Give back to him. I do like most of them never use the fletching if table though. Yeah, it just seems like unnecessary. But with fire spell. The stone cutter, yeah, then the stone cutter is great. Um then eat him like a giant sweet roll. So sweet roll. This guy. Timmy and gone. Bye bye. Go find Donkey. Go find pumpkin. Okay. Good old Fimmy. Oh my god, what a weirdo. Alright, so we're going over there. Can we go over there? Oh yeah, there's like weird, awkward. No, no, there's not. Never mind. Oh, I just got trolled. It's so weird. But I mean, like, it's the Shivering Isles. Hi. What is it now? Um, I have your lucky grapes. I've been looking for those. I thought Fimian stole them thinking he could eat them, but I could never prove it. Thank you for returning them. Uh, sleeping outside. It's just one more way they tried to get me to get all special in the head. Special right? in the head, huh? Sleep outside and everything. I don't belong here, really. What I would do for a warm bed. Soon I'll be leaving here. As soon as I can figure out how to leave without them noticing. Um, how about switching beds? Well, it sounds fishy, but I suppose I can trust you. I'm sure I'll regret this later, but yeah. Sure, fine. I'm tired of sleeping outside. Tell him I'll sleep in his bed, and he can sleep in mine. What a weird side quest. Uh, do you have good rumors? The belly walk is a No, no you don't. Goodbye. Okay, but isn't there like kind of a wall right here? Hey, have weirdo. Have you found me a safe place outside to sleep yet? Yeah. You found a place for me to sleep? Outside under the stars, too small to fall and hurt me. Excellent. Excellent. Tell me more. 
He's gonna sleep in your bed, and you're gonna sleep in his. Really? And it's a safe place? Not at the bottom of a tall wall? Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> that sounds perfect. I'm glad you well, like I it. I guess if he's not afraid of the walls falling on him, he won't care when they do. Can't save everyone, can we? Uh, so it's my reward. Oh, yes. My pardons. But what can I give you? Mm. Oh, here. Take this scroll. I was going to use it when the walls fell on me and I got trapped. But now I don't need it anymore. Burst of might. You got more rumors? If you see a gnarl, be careful what spells you use on them. Oh, okay. That was ominous. All right, let's save and uh, keep on making our way. Keep on making our way, I guess. Um. Speak, citizen. Mm, I'm good. Yeah, off to the palace. There's some kind of camp. I guess we'll go in this way. Blessings, citizen. Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. We are about to meet Shea Gorath for the first time. Whee! Oh, that jump though. Always a pleasure. Here, can we get a let me look at my loot for a second here? Nope. Oh, I have broken pants. When did that happen? Whoa. Well, look who's here. You. There we are. How about that? It seemed like a it seemed like a good thumbnail and uh yeah, usually the the tech life ruins them. A new arrival! Shame about my gatekeeper. I'm so happy I could just tear out your intestines and strangle you with them. <laughs> awesome. I suppose an introduction is in order. I'm Sheogorath, Prince of Madness, and other things. I'm not talking about them. Okay, then don't. You've probably figured that out by now. Let's hope so, or we're in real trouble. And out come the intestines, and I skip rope with them. <laughs> not disturbing at all. But perhaps now's not the time. And you've made it this far, farther than anyone else. Well done. Well Take done, this you. Perhaps it will serve you well, or look lovely on your corpse. Oh yeah, no, no, he's crazy. Uh, this is the um, same Daedric prince as um, the Pelagius wing, um, the like gauntlet we had to do in Skyrim. I've been waiting for you, for someone like you, for someone other than you for some time. I need a champion, and you've got the job. Okay, cool. Time to save the realm. Rescue the damsel, slay the beast, or die trying. I absolutely before. love the Mad Hatter reference in the coming. Skyrim quest. Everything it's so good. Changes, even Daedric princes, especially Daedric princes. Especially Daedric princes. Changes. Aedra are the embodiment of change, change and permanency. I'm no different, except in the ways that I am. A gray march is coming. Between rumors and changes, I'm probably gonna have to like crank out some Fleetwood Mac after this. The details aren't in at least not right now. Eternity is on a rather tight deadline. We'll get back to that later. Later. So what now? Now? You run an errand for me. An important one, of course. 
Anything I tell you to do is important. My realm, my rules. You're going to Zedillion, one of my favorite spots in the Isles. It's a little place I used to take care of unwanted visitors. And some are more unwanted than others. <laughs> Zendillion? A gatekeeper takes care of most of the unwanted, but he's dead. We'll have to remedy that soon as well. Whoopsie, he fell on gold brands. Danny, there are those that have other ways into my realm, and they're on the move. We don't want them here, trust me. So, you're going to get Zedillion up and running. Here's a little book to tell you how. And the attenuator of judgment. Uh, you'll need that too. Of course, you can always get more details from Haskell. He's a detail oriented type of person. A big help. And a snap. I absolutely adore Haskell. Now, get going before I change my mind. Or my mind changes me. Uh, Grey March? Really? No need to trouble yourself with the details of that now. It would just cloud your little mind. What is important is getting to Zedillion. Quickly! Yeah, Haskell is bored. like the low-key hero oh, here. You wouldn't like me when I'm bored. Mm, okay, let's talk to Haskell because... Run yeah. along, scoot. Dad outfit, though. Hey, Haskell. The Mad God has given you a task. Surely someone of your copious talent should be able to handle it? Uh, well, tell me more about your he lord here. He is the Prince of Madness, the ruler of the Shivering Isles. Uh, tell me about the Shivering the Isles. The Shivering Isles is what Sheogorath wills it to be. It's a very appropriate answer. Yes, quite an amazing place, really. Wonderful for relieving one's tension as you watch those troublesome adventurers suffer. No offense. Oh my goodness. I'd say your next move is to head to Zedillion and you get You don't you don't you don't say. We've we've only heard this before. Uh reactivated? Yes. Ah, silly me. The book has no pictures. Can't really expect you to read that now, can I? To reactivate Zedillion for my lord's pleasure, you'll need to find three focus crystals and return them to their resting place. Perfect. Each crystal has a matching receptacle called a Judgment Nexus. Even you can't miss them. Judgment Without Nexus, the in so place, cool. The Resonator of Judgment. Zedillion's resonator of Judgment. Oh my god, I love these names. Um, okay. My work is never done. Okay. So we are going to have to go get ourselves fixed up, though, because we do have some, um, like, broken armor and um, stuff. Blessings, citizen. Yeah, you too. Have a good day. I think I've died a few times trying to leave here because the wall's really high. Hi, baby. I have to go get her snacks in a second. And I need a tea refresh. Hi. And I think this is probably as good a place of any. I'm going to take a quick uh, tea break here. Um, and when we come back, we're uh, going to go to Zendillion. So, alrighty, guys. I'll be back in a few minutes. Alrighty, guys. I'm back. Thanks for waiting. I have a fresh cup of currant tea and Ripley has her puzzle box. Now, when I say that she has her puzzle box, um, why is this crazy? are still going okay I don't know twitch app I don't know what to say all right we got me we've got the game 
There we go. Okay. So Ripley has one of those like puzzle boxes. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's really a difference between the ones for dogs and cats. Um, but she has like a little, it's supposed to be like the, the stage two puzzle box. I've never seen a stage one one. Is that just like, um, like a bowl with a paper towel on top? I don't know. But anyway, so she solved her puzzle box very, very quickly, mortal. easily. Um, probably when did I get the puzzle box for her? Maybe she had been with us two and a half weeks when uh, I got her a puzzle box. And um, she worked it out in a couple minutes. So when I fill her puzzle box with treats, it's really just like a kitty cat, like charcuterie platter at that point. <laughs> So, but she's got treats and she's right outside the door with us, so. Hello, I'm Dumag Grabonk. Best and great smith in Bonk. town. It's the best. I know the secret art of forging amber. Here, take She this is, she's so it smart. We started I... her on those little conversation buttons. Um, and I will tell you legit, um, I'm pretty sure she has a crush on Billy from Billy Speaks. It's so funny. Like, it doesn't matter if she has, like, full-on zoomies. If I turn on Billy, she just, like, stops then her tracks. And she's just like, Billy. So I'm hoping by her watching Billy, she'll figure out how to push the buttons. Um, we, we've we started with two. We've started with Ball because her favorite game is Fetch and Scritches. So I'm hoping. But I was getting really frustrated. And then I realized that I went back to Billy's old videos and realized I think it took her like a month before she really was like pushing the buttons on her own. I was like, okay, okay. Um, that, no, I don't really need that. Ooh. Oh, it's expansive. Amber is a resin found in root system Oh, we could get some amber armor. That would be cool. When treated properly, it is especially suited to lightweight weapons and armor. I alone hmm. know the ancient art of Tea leaf. amber. I can even craft you magical items. Hmm. Okay, so um Bonk's uh pretty cool guy. All right. Um I think we're all fixed up though. I think we're ready Goodbye. for adventure. Um, yeah. Charity of madness, huh? I think we'll we'll stick with uh, Cruelty's Heart for now. Um, also, it's just like a very edgy name. <laughs> so. I love all the, uh, the busts. I think it's great. <sighs> well, I know everyone thinks that their pet is really smart, but I genuinely think that uh, Ripley's a bit of a smarty pants. So she communicates with us. She's super chatty. Um, what? And um, so she doesn't uh, love it all the time, obviously, but um, she knows that like when mom has her phone, that if she like sits real pretty, that well, it usually sits. means that there are going to be extra treats and snuggles at the end. Everyone thinks her pet is really smart. I know Cruz is dumb as bricks. Oh, well. Um, uh, I know that, um, Ripley is clever. I know she's a big explorer and she's very communicative. I also know that right now one of her favorite toys is one of my orphan socks. Um, that despite the fact that she doesn't like when I accidentally drip water on her because she insists on standing under my feet when I do dishes. Um, and she's afraid of the dark. So yeah. We all have our limitations. Um, yeah. No, I know what you mean, though. Like, I mean, there's just as much variety with our furry companions as there are with, you know, people in, in real life. Like, let's be honest. Um, we've met people where you're like, 
shouldn't you just wear a helmet all the time? Oh, nice. Poor Cruz loves to play with his brother Moss. If Moss doesn't play with him, he will bark and growl at Moss, which of course makes Moss go away from him. <laughs> he just is like, play with me though. Mm. He's not going to play with you if you're mean to him. Yeah. Um, Ripley's still learning that unlike kittens, when she like munches our fingers to tell us it's playtime, that, that, that we're not going to play with her. Um, but she's getting better at like understanding like gentle. Um, it took her a while to figure out that like to play with the humans, you have to retract your claws um, to do things. But um, she, uh, she now like will pat my face or she'll like boop my nose back with her like nails retracted um when she's hungry um she wants extra kibble she like will wake me up by patting my mouth um because she's figured out like me boca su boca like she's she's figured that out um and I'm like, what a smart little girl. Like she figured out that even though our mouths are completely different, um, that like we eat from the same face hole. So, oh, oh, what do we got? What do we get? Um, so yeah, so sometimes in the middle of the night, because she's still too little to be really trusted to run around the house like willy-nilly. Um, there's just, uh, as much as I've baby-proofed, like, I always am like, hmm. Yeah. Oh, hi, babies. Do you want to sleep in your blankie? She has, um, I have a folded-up blanket under my desk, like, on the, um, there's, like, a board. So... Aw, it's okay, Mega Terra Nova. I'll upload this on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, she uh, she'll she'll wake me up, and she she has a little bit more of a mature meow now, but it's not by much. She still has like a little baby meow. I think she's just going to be a little soft-spoken gal, which I understand. <laughs> um, as somebody who's almost forty and still sounds like a teenager, like on the phone, it's. Yeah, I get it. It happens. But, uh, she, um, she knows when she's purposefully using her baby voice, like, to get, I don't know, she, she, she understands manipulation and she uses it for extra treats and affection. And, um, I can't really fault her for that. Um... But she, like, uses her little baby voice, and then she, like, pats my lips to, like, get more treats and things. <laughs> She's like, Mom, I know it's 2 a.m., and I know that it's not 4 yet, because she gets fed at 4, 10, 4, and 10. And, um, yeah, she just was like, meow, meow. I'm like, okay, all right, more kibbles for you. Oh, I adore her. She's so cute and she's so fun. Uh, I have a not gray picture because it was dark. I had to dim the lights a little bit. But last night, her and I had like a little girls' night. Um, since it's Friday, I like was like, yeah, let's hang out. I made myself probably the world's laziest margarita and um, nachos, and then I put like like her gravy treat on top of her kibble and we just kind of hung out the two of us and um <laughs> and so we were watching the uh, a couple episodes of american horror story and uh of course she like saddles up and she's all comfortable in the chair and i swear she uh looked uh she fell asleep looking like the world's most interesting man and i thought it was really funny <laughs> So she had like her little arm up on the couch. 
so. But yeah, she's a good girl. Obviously she does like naughty cat things, but like you, the normal naughty cat things. So. Kind of like, um, we have that like bitter apple like stuff to put on like our cable covers. So she's particularly like dissuaded from chewing on cables. Um, I think she's figured out that it kind of just like wears off or diminishes over time because she'll just wait. But I don't get just from like how things move around the house um, when she plays with them. I don't actually think she really plays with cables and wires unless we're around to see her do it. Because, like, if I leave her alone, she doesn't mess with anything. It's just where where it is. But I think she does it because she knows she's not supposed to. And then, of course, like... Ooh! Um, so I think she does it because she knows she's not supposed to. Um... And then it's like, oh, well, if I do this thing I'm not supposed to, I get picked up and just distracted, you know? So, like I said, she knows she's being manipulative and I'm not really mad about it. Ooh, madness boots make tricks. I have found an unusual item called a matrix. It looks like a mold for some kind of some kind and seems magical. I should ask around. Someone in the Shivering Isles must know what this is used for. I'm pretty sure that um, it's for making madness armor. I think it's like a mold. So we'll have to check that out. Madness boots. I want some crazy boots. All right. So uh, it's really funny because, um, you know, I for every game that I've ever talked about how much I adore cats, like I just was always worried that I was too allergic or whatever to have a cat. And I might be, she might just be a low dander cat and I just got really lucky. Um, we're also really good at brushing her and vacuuming, but, um, but like literally she sleeps like between my neck and my shoulder most nights and I have no problems. But if I go outside to get the mail, I'm like, oh, sometimes fall allergies, I swear, are worse than spring ones. But yeah, so, um, so there's like a bunch of like videos, like I have a, I have a couple games that I've played that are like kind of cat oriented or feature a cat. And I'm like, yep, wish I could have a cat too allergic. And then like, now I have a cat. But um, at one point I did pick up a bundle of like kitty cat games. Um, so I feel like it's somehow appropriate now. <laughs> um, I, before getting her, I actually backed a Kickstarter for a DLC for the game Cat Tales, which is like um, Stardew Valley, but like cats. <laughs> Alright. And um, Ooh, look how cool this is. That's not a cool guy, though. Yeah, um, since my D&D group, I should say, my tabletop group is always looking for something new and different, um, kind of a little more innovative than, you know, just what you're going to get at your local game shop. Um, there's, there are three of us who frequently back Kickstarters, and two of us in particular who love, like, the really cute stuff. And um, so he and I constantly are backing different things. And uh, I actually just saved one this morning. I'll probably back. I think it's going to be, I think it's, like, 25 Canadian, so it shouldn't be, you know, that, so it's not that expensive, but it's... Um, it has like a Studio Ghibli sort of aesthetic, but it is a airship sort of adventure game. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I think that's going to be super good. Um, oh, he sees me. Oh, she's doing zoomies now. Hi, were you running up and down the steps? Yeah. 
Do you need a snuggle? She needs lovies. I was told by the foster that um, she's kind of a clingy cat and um, definitely needs extra affection. But since I work from home and I was looking for a little co-pilot, um, I was like, well, that's perfect. Um, she doesn't have any kitty siblings, but she has me 24-7. So um, we play fetch for almost four hours a day. And, um, she has like a little spot on the couch, um, with a big fluffy folded up fleece. Yesterday she stole my fleece too. So she was helping me write up, um, a draft for work yesterday. And she was just so good and so sweet. And then she has a big thick blankie under my desk as well. So, hi, I know it's, I know you want to play. Go ahead. Go run away. She's so stinking cute. <sighs> but yeah, she, she, she that, so that's her like voice, like her like, mom, I need attention. And that's about as deep as it gets, but she also does like a little baby voice. So it's just like, she knows, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you know, for, unfortunately for folks who are just like, oh, here she is with her cat again. Like, she's, she just turned six months old. She's still a baby. And, um, you know, we want her to have that, like, strong, trusting relationship with us. So I'm going to dote on her excessively. And Mr. B does too. Like, he comes home and he scoops her up. And Mr. Uh, Mr. B is a very tall man. Um... And, uh, so of course, like, and, you know, he's a big, strong guy. And, uh, and so we just, I mean, we're just very different in size, but so he's like the only other person who's allowed to pick her up. And yeah, she's just like, she's ready for it. He comes home and he's just like, he's here for it. Um, she's here for it. She, she, she she knows what time he's supposed to be home and he she starts pacing and looking for him so when he gets home the first thing he does is scoop her up I'm just looking there's someone walking a doggy outside she's probably on her way to the window um but we knew from the foster that um she really didn't play with the other kitty cats but she did um have a big doggy I've discovered the first of the three focus crystals. It was affixed to the top of a grummet shaman's crystal staff. I think they're using the crystals as a power source for their weapons. Now that I've removed it from the staff, I should place the focus crystal in its judgment nexus to continue. Interesting. Okay. Um, so yeah, so she had a big doggy friend um, at the foster. So... So instead, now she has um, a big bear. <laughs> so yeah, the first night she was with us, she was super scared and very like timid. Um, she like slept under the toilet that night. Like she was just like, no. So I laid on the bathroom floor with her um, and um, so I put like my work computer on the, f like on a chair by the bathroom so I could like work while sitting on the floor and um I just like laid on the floor with her for almost eight hours when she first came to us and uh I sang to her and she finally came out from behind the toilet and stuff and then um when I needed to go and grab a couple hours of sleep before my stream the next day Mr. B came down and she just like saddled up on his chest all like four pounds of her and yeah so she, I think she just likes that, the sound of that big heartbeat. So, um, so yeah, when he comes home, the first thing he does is he scoops her up and she gets big snuggles from dad. 
I did that with a dog once. She didn't end up working out for our family, but I love that you doted on her like that. Yep. Nope. She gets lovies all day. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Well, that was fine. <laughs> I forgot about traps. So talking about cat stuff. Um, yeah, even though I, you know, obviously have had problems with, you know, allergies before, um, since I went to college on a community service scholarship, um, I, um, obviously had to do community service to maintain my scholarship and, uh, and I joined a service group and like all that stuff. I joined the service fraternity. So, um, I had lots of community service that I had to do every semester. So I spent most of my time working with the Humane Society and someone who fostered for the Humane Society. Um, so I've gotten my fair share of puppies and kitties, like really, really teeny tiny ones. Um, I used to um, volunteer for um, National Spay Day, like that kind of stuff. So again, just, you know, allergies be damned. Um, but I've always had a soft spot. Um, I absolutely adore rabbits. Like there's just something about, um, an animal that's so tiny and so vulnerable. That's like, oh, well, my eyes aren't open yet, but I'm just going to run full force into the world. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but gosh, I just, I love animals and, uh, Mr. B loves animals. So um, but yeah, I just, I think if you bring an animal into your home, like, I mean, they're so dependent on you. You should give them everything you can. And a domestic cat can live 15 to 20 years. And we're hoping to give her as many of the happy, healthiest years have, you know, possible. You did not just heal yourself. Woo! Yeah, he did. We might need to pull out Goldbrand. So, but I understand, like, um, especially if you already have pets and stuff, like, um, if, like, there's an animal that's just not going to work for a family, but, um, yeah, in our case, we didn't, we kind of were starting carte blanche. So I was able to ask about like, uh, we wanted an older kitten just because like, um, I, like I can give her a lot of attention because I work from home, but I don't have like bottle feeding, um, time, <laughs> uh, during the day. That's just not possible. So, um, so we had inquired about the, uh, 14 week old kittens when we had asked and, um, she said that uh, the uh, the beige tabby, um, oh, another matrix, um, was kind of clingy and really shy, but really sweet and cuddly and, and whatever. So I was like, well, that's our cat. Like, that's our cat right there. And um, yeah. <laughs> and then when we got her, we realized that tabby was kind of a, a very loose description of her coat. Uh, she has she has freckles on her underside. She's got stripes on her legs. She's got marble swirls on her sides. She's got a striped hat and she has leopard pants. I'm like, you stole everyone's clothes for your fancy out outfit, my dear. Big difference in care between a wean kitten or a puppy and an unweaned one. Oh my God. Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, so one of the cats we had at Humane Society that ended up going into foster because like obviously she had kittens. She was pregnant with four kittens. Um, this poor mama, who knows how long she had been on the street, but she was feral, like feral. And um, so they named her Satin because the manager wouldn't let them name the, let the employees name her Satan, but yeah. But she had four kittens that all look completely different. Um, but, like, that's that was my first experience with, like, no, basically almost no hair babies. And it was just like, oh, wow. We got Cruz too young, really. He wasn't able to spend enough time with his siblings and mom to teach him all the dog manners. Thankfully, Moss taught him a lot or he'd be even dumber than he is. It's true, though. Like, you know, sometimes you don't want to say it that way, but it's true. Like... 
they learn so much like Ripley had never been to our house and at the time I only had one litter box because I kind of wanted to see how she liked the one I bought her um but like literally I just sat her in the litter so like her little feet could feel like you know the gravel like the litter and um yeah um it's been seven weeks now and like we've had no accidents i've had to move her litter box around a little bit just to find like the best place for everyone and um yeah no accidents she finds it um her litter box gets scrubbed every two weeks and um she she finds it she knows what it's supposed to do she obviously knows how to uh, you know initiate play at least with another kitten or puppy um yeah and of course she obviously spent time with people because she meows they don't really meow for their benefits like cats have like their cool purring things that they do with each other because yeah they have like the cool hearing but um they just have different vocalizations but they meow for our benefit not for ours oh my gosh guys Boa Voltage. Aw, oh, Magenta, thanks for the follow. Um, welcome to the Tea Fam. Um, I stream every Saturday at 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. for breakfast, and every Sunday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, for, well, just hanging out. So, yeah, thank you. Whoop! Forgot about that guy. Whoopsie doodles. Um, <clears throat> my childhood dog, he was a big boy. Um, he was a German Shepherd lab mix. And I believe like at his optimum weight as like a young adult dog, he was like 90, 95 pounds. He was a big boy, but he was like a big muscly boy. Um, he looked basically like a German Shepherd with stumpier legs, but he had the coloring of a yellow lab, so he was almost white. And he had a big pink nose, and he had like a big, um, like, caramel colored stripe down his back. He was like literally the color of caramel popcorn. Um, and he was like the last of his litter. I think he was the only male. Um, but also, like, all of his sisters got adopted before him. All right, we found the final crystal. Um, all right, my next task should be to attune the resonator by using the attuner of judgment that Shay Gorath provided me. So, but he was another one where it was, like, I think probably his sisters left too early and he was left kind of alone. Um, so it was really, like, my dad who taught him how to be, like, a pupper. Um, but... Yeah, I can't, he wasn't a bad dog, but he was a very strong-willed dog, um, and, like, I was his person, like, there's just no doubt in the world, like, I was his person, even though I was a tiny human, uh, we, we got him when I was five, and we had him until, um, until right before I graduated high school, um, he had, um, a abdominal tumor but I mean he was 12 like for a big dog it's a good life and uh yeah but he but again like that dog should not have lived that long as a puppy despite our best um attempts to keep him out of trouble he drank antifreeze he um got it he had consumed quick scent quick set cement at some point um, which we were very worried about but it just ended up being for about a week he had some really um dense poops <laughs> um he got into like fundraiser chocolate for school um he figured out how to open the fridge using the tea towel um hanging on the door handle so we had to take the door handle off um he once ate like a pound of Amish cheese which is like unpasteurized <laughs> um he oh my god he ate like like a brick of butter once 
Oh gosh, poor dumb smarty. Yeah, yeah, like he's just smart and it was like he had... <sighs> My dog had two wolves living inside of him and one was a German Shepherd and one was a lab. And if you've ever had a lab, you know exactly what I mean. They're sweet, goofy dogs, but they are kind of dumber than bricks sometimes. Um, and I mean that in the best way possible. Oh, Mr. B. Um, so yeah, absolutely adored him. Um, I, yeah, he was like, he was a good dog to me and he was a really good best friend, especially when making friends was hard in school. So he was a good boy. Um, probably the only reason that, um, my dad's house had never been broken into, um, in that neighborhood is because we had a big, scary white dog. Um, probably one of the best, um, doggy stories I have is um my i had relatives visiting from the south and of course they brought like a like a real watermelon and if you've ever lived on if you've ever been to both coasts you'll know what i mean out here you can only get the small like seedless watermelons unless you go to like the farmer's market and um so you can get the big red seeded ones if you go to the farmer's market or that kind of thing and um oh okay i'm not paying attention but my relatives brought like a, one of those giant proper like big watermelons um, with them up from the south and um and we left it on the kitchen floor and you know like it's a melon like what's he gonna do with it so now my dog was known for being particularly gregarious with uh new friends uh especially like older ladies he really liked old ladies uh, including my great grandmother who at the time of her passing was like four foot six and all like 90 some pounds of him would try to crawl up on her lap like a puppy and um so the fact that he had been quiet for a really long time started getting very suspicious but, you know, we kind of peeked down the kitchen and all we saw was this happy little tail. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. And, uh... Have you seen Facebook groups called Catholics Against Seedless Watermelons and Seedless Watermelons Against Catholics? No, but now I'm going to have to look that up. Thanks, Magenta. I appreciate that. Um... I did just recently add two new um, pages to my repertoire, which is um, um, terrible food porn, which I, I, now YouTube's going to get mad I said that word, and um, uh, food, food in the wrong places or something like that, and oof, oof. Uh, but yes, I will check that out. Oh my goodness. You know, like, as if... Oh, there we go. It's been attuned. I should now make my way back to the new, new sh Shayoth and report my success. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. Um... I, I do recommend those, by the way, especially if you've ever seen, like, the hideous, like, gelatin foods of the mid-century. I recommend it, but, um, so yeah, so anyway, our, our dog was like, he, I don't know what we thought he was doing, but, you know, he peeked out into the kitchen, and he was just, like, all, like, um, you know, just totally content, his tail was wagging, like, what, what could go wrong? Fine. Lord Chair oh. has sent someone to assist uh, And we go out into the Where kitchen and there he <laughs> is must get into my to his ears with his like long Welcome German Shepherd face in I'm this watermelon. He had con Kidaban, now this yes. was like a proper watermelon. He had consumed a hole through the rind and had basically eaten the whole watermelon clean from the inside leaving nothing but a clean white white rind 
with a hole just big enough for his face. We did not have watermelon, and he had diarrhea for a while. If you would have told me that, like, ten years later, that the reason he ended up with a stomach tumor is because a watermelon had grown in there, I would have believed you. A wonder of engineering. Not That's explosive, not but not great. He was not a happy camper. But considering all the weird crap he ate as a puppy, like... I'm pretty sure he's kind of used to getting diarrhea from time to time. Courtesy of the Resonator of Judgment. Um, interesting. Tell me more. Ever since that wretched gatekeeper so, yeah. played, Zedillion became Man, redundant. that dog ate everything. It and it's disrepair. not like we it were careless. It's not like we didn't baby-proof. Like, even past the time past, that, like, my my dad moving. and, my, like, my parents Death would need to have the little plugs in the sockets, you know, for me. Um, the plugs, the little child-proof, um, like, places plugs that go into this the outlets, the, the little plastic in, ones, stayed in because honestly nobody was really sure that the, the dog wouldn't do something with the sockets, get like his operation. tail fluff stuck in there, who knows. How do I get out of here? Yes, yes, I, I tend to ramble. You'll have to forgive me. If you have the attenuator, then Shea Gorda must have sent you. Zedillion would normally so. have sent you back to the entrance when you stepped on the pet <sighs> in the resonator chamber. You know... Since you're up here, I can only surmise that adventurers are already entering the dungeon as we speak. Animals are just as weird and unique as people are, and, um, yeah, I love it. <laughs> uh, what should I do? The only thing we can do is let the adventurers complete a cycle through here. I'll be glad to help. I assume Shea Gorath gave you the Manual of Zedillion. You can consult it for more information. Or I can provide instructions. Can I be lazy? Can you give me instructions? As the adventurers make their way through Zedillion's chambers, they will encounter choices that you make in these control platforms. All you need to do is decide what becomes of the adventurers. Will you drive them insane? Or will you pull the life from their bodies? Ooh, guys, we have choices to make. Um, do you handle the cleanup? Well. The dead will be disposed of. Have no fear. That's my job. Those that are lucky enough to merely go insane will be granted a place in the Shivering Isles as a permanent resident. Um, how do I make the choices? Simple. Wait until the adventurers are in position, and then press a button. If they survived, they will proceed to the next chamber, and so on. It's really quite ingenious. Uh, how do I know when I'm done? You'll know you're done when they lie dead on the ground or they are out of their minds. I'm, I'm always driving them... Driving and seeing more fun. Why did that block that word? That's weird. Okay. Of course, any of their possessions you wish to keep... All right, so I'll are we going to go with crazy adventures versus dead adventures? Because I'm, I'm feeling that choice. Uh, that's enough. As you wish. It's not like I read the instruction manual anyway. So good to be back in business. All right. Well, on the plus side, they might be able to heal themselves, and here we are. Giant Gnarl. This is supposed to scare Gnarl us. Swarm. Let's go with Giant Gnarl. What an oblivion is that thing? <laughs> this is one of the horrid guardians of which the stories spoke? Be careful. There may be more to this creature than meets the eye. I feel like that's the question. It's like, would you rather fight, like, a horse-sized chicken or, like, ten chicken-sized horses? I think I'd always want to fight the one thing, um, just because, like, crowd control is a lot harder. 
Something's not right. All this time it was merely an illusion. How clever. Wait, what's wrong with Lewin? He makes no sense. He should be dead. But what did oh. oh my goodness. I think this place got to him. Perhaps we should leave. No, we'll pick him up on the way out. He must fend for himself. I've unleashed the giant gnarl on the adventurers in Zendillion. With the threat of what he perceived as certain death knocking at his door, Lewin, Lewin, the rogue, has gone insane. I should make my way to the next observation room and choose how the adventurers will encounter their next obstacle. Heck yeah. <laughs> Watching them run from the giant gnarl gets me every time. Open the gate! <laughs> I don't know. I think a chicken would totally kill you if it was big enough, but little horses would run away. Maybe. Um, Mr. Mr. B grew up on a farm and he like has like a deep hatred for roosters. Not chickens, just roosters. I think that would be the difference though, like chicken versus rooster, because the roosters have those like extra like talons on the back. I don't know about that. No nice roosters and mean hens. Oh, well, I'm sure there's both. I just, you know. Bah. This place is beginning to bug me. It's usually the other way around. Something isn't right here. Alrighty, drop keys. Fire trap. Let's drop the keys. This is so interesting. Oh, that's a lot of keys. I feel like if you were standing in the wrong place, that might as well be just as deadly as the fire trap. They could just reach through the bars. You know, just like, click. Yeah, there's definitely some parts in the game where I'm like, I should be able to, like, poke the lever from here. I've caused uh, Sindelius the mage to go insane by pouring hundreds of keys on the ground, which convinced him that one of them opened the gate to the huge treasure pile. All that remains now is the leader of the group, Grimok. I should make my way to the last observation room and choose how the stubborn orc will encounter his final obstacle. If not that, just grab fistfuls of treasure, right? There's definitely moments, though, where I feel like um, I should have been able to, like, fire a bow. Um, None of those keys fit the lock. <clears throat> like, fire an arrow through, like, a fence or something. And I'm just like, mm. Invisible barriers! Alright. Ooh, that's a creepy-ass room. possibly throw at you well i gotta make him crazy too i can't kill the orc i have a big soft spot for orcs only me left fine i'll show the second the second best mer what? what how in oblivion can i be dead this this is impossible nothing killed me i didn't even get a chance to fight no chance to defend myself. No chance for. Aww, we took Why? away his like his mojo. Ooh, impossible! This is impossible. Grimok has never lost a fight. Never. Aww, poor little guy. By making Grimok think that he actually died and became a ghost, I've driven him insane. Now that all the adventurers have been dealt with, I should speak to Kilbon. Hey, bro. You've made short work of the intruders. Shea Gorath should be proud to have such an efficient apprentice. Now, 
If you'll step on the last teleporter pad, I will meet you in the reception chamber so we can recover your earnings. A resonator of judgment? The resonator works by drawing adventurers to itself with a sort of magical siren's call. That's kind of cool. Cheer Gorath uses the resonator to find the cream of the crop, as he calls them, the best of the worst to populate the isles. Oh my goodness. Quite clever, eh? Not right. too worry. We'll have your spoils to you in no time at all. It's one of those things. As is the tradition, you are to be awarded a focus crystal as a token. I don't know. I feel like any time you deal with a Daedric Prince, you just shouldn't trust it. Placed in the main hall, if you wish to at take all. A look at it. <laughs> uh, earnings? Oh yes, of course. It seems a most unusual weapon was recovered from the orc warrior, Gromok. Never seen anything like it. But perhaps his journal can give you some useful. I'm not reading that stuff. What are you talking about? Beyond that. Take whatever else you need from the recovery chest. You've earned it. You're free to go at any time, of course. My Just favorite sword? Alright, well, let's Good check it out. Um. Oh, Dusk Fang! That's how we get it. Talisman of Abatement? Water Breathing? Detect Life? Feather? Oh, that's a good one. If we can hold it, we're taking it. Does he have anything cool on him? I totally forgot about Duskfang. No. Whoa! Not gonna lie, sometimes, uh... Uh oh. All right, I guess I guess we're not sneaking here. So, uh, gold fang. Oh, you know what? Like you said, uh, I just got a new sword. Let's check it out. One hand, nourish blade on strike, frost damage. All right, let's try it out. Ooh, ooh. Okay, that's kind of... Uh, before exiting Zendillion, I was attacked by three unusual beings in equally strange armor. I should ask Killabon if he knows anything about them. Oh, can we spare... Ooh, that's heavy. Let's see. Okay. Hey, can we let the crazy folks out? Hey. That was quite a battle. I hope you are uninjured. That was a good sword. Who were those beings? You've not heard the legends? How could that be? Those beings, as you call them, aren't beings at all. They are the soul Knights of the Order. Known as the Knights of, Knights of Order. Order. Sorry. Their attraction to the Resonator isn't surprising. It was built from one of the obelisks that dot the isles they seem to have an affinity for. You must proceed to share Gorath at once and tell him the knights have returned. Quickly now, go! Go! Fly, you fools! Oh wait, I'm the fool. Haha! I want to let them out. Come hang out with me, guys. I know you're crazy, but we could still have a good time. <sighs> oh, I'm so excited I'm going to start a new game with you guys tomorrow. So... I'll take some notes on what I think my build should be, but we can uh, we can do character creation tomorrow and, and figure out what we want to do. It's been a long time since I've played anything Fallout, so uh, we'll go in through. Um, can we go straight to the palace? We can. Okay, I just saw what time it is. Ta 
tell me it's not just the freaking coolest. Yes. Madam? How may I serve? Uh, I guess we'll go Speak into the mania me. side this time. Not picking favorites. Well now, what news do you have to report? Uh, I was attacked by knights. So soon? Not a surprise, I suppose. We'll get to that later. No need to burden your little brain with it now. And Zedillion, since you're standing here, I assume you've succeeded. Or you're terribly confused. Or really lacking in good judgment. Zendillion functions once more. Wonderful! Time for a celebration! Cheese for everyone! Yeah, cheese! Right, I really like that. cheese. Cheese for no one. That could be just as much of a celebration if you don't like cheese, true? <laughs> You've run a maze like a good little rat. But no cheese for you yet. No oh, cheese for you. I've granted you a new spell. The ability to summon Haskell. My Chamberlain to aid you in your travels. He knows a lot. More than he knows. Bum bum bum. In fact, give it a try. Summon our friend to you now. I'll wait. All right. Um Is it called Summon Haskell? Shield of Shazar. Oh, there we go. There we go. Ah, our Lord has granted you the power <laughs> to summon me. How wonderful for me. Yes, how wonderful. When summoned, I can offer advice on your current endeavor. I imagine it's up to you what to do with my wisdom. Do try to use your power sparingly. I have duties to which I must attend. Rather more important than shepherding you around, I'm sure. I'm sure. All right. Well, thanks for that. Isn't that a hoot? I love it myself. Best part of being a Daedric prince, really. Go ahead. Try it again. He loves it. Uh, I'm sure he does, but like... Just one more time. Ah, summoned again. My lord does so enjoy that, as is his prerogative. I'll assume you're done for now. Probably. I do like bumbling around on my own a lot. Good, good. You'll need all the help you can get if you're going to defeat Jigalag and stop the Grey March. Oh, don't expect to summon dear Haskell anywhere but in the realm. He dislikes leaving my presence. I get that sometimes. Uh, so who is Jigalag? The Daedric Prince of Order. Or biscuits. No, no order. And not in a good way. Bleak. Colorless. Dead. Boring, boring, boring! And not a fan of my work, I can tell you. Hates it, hates me. A bit single-minded, if you take my meaning. You've seen his knights? Not the warm and cuddly sort. <laughs> Not a bit of original thought in their lifeless husks. So, you're going to help me stop him. Okay. How? Again with the niggling little details. Hold your tongue. Or I will. <laughs> we'll get to that all in due time. For now, you've got other work to do. Um, okay, what is the Grey March? An event! A movement! An apocalypse of sorts. Happens every era at the end of every era. Which is to say, now. The Grey March comes and Jigalag walks. Or runs. Or never skips, sidles, or struts. Or mostly he just destroys everything around him. 
Sounds fun. So what do you want me to do now? Ask? Ask? I don't ask! I tell! This is my realm, remember? My creation, my place, my rule! Aw, oh, Mr. B's home. Look at you. No concept of what you've stumbled into. No sense of place. You don't even really know where you are, do you? Not really. I suppose few really do, but that's beside the point. We're going to give you a taste of where you found yourself. You're going to learn. Ooh, I like learning stuff. Learn what? Two halves, two rulers, two places. Yeah. Meet and greet. Do what they will, so you know what they're about. Sounds good. The Duke of Mania and the Duchess of Dementia. Seek them out and let them show you what new Sheath is. You might be surprised. Might be. One, and maybe you'll make some friends along the way. I That's like making friends. Nice. Alrighty. Ah, come visit again, or I'll pluck out your eyes. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. I think that's it. We'll pick up here a lot next time. We have some loot to get rid of, but we can we can do that next week. Uh, yeah. So this was, uh, I think, a really fun start uh, to this. I uh, appreciate you guys hanging out. This was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I think uh, Miss Ripley was also really well behaved today. So she'll get extra cuddles and treaties when I'm out of here. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed being here too, Jumpy. Um, always, you're always welcome. And uh, I hope to see... You guys back here tomorrow, 3 p.m. Pacific time for the start of Fallout New Vegas. Uh, yeah, so thank you, everyone, old friends and new. And uh, until tomorrow, happy sipping. <laughs>